Okay, so this question, question seven, uh, the final one, talks about dissolved oxygen concentration um, and it gives you an uh, experimental procedure for how we can calculate it. So, first of all, we can, it's a titration, the titration required 24.6 centimetres cubed of 0.001 moles per centimetre cubed, so the first of all. So, let's just bash it and let's work out the moles of S2 over V2 minus, that's your concentration, times your volume, over a thousand, and that will give you 2.46 times 10 to the minus 5 moles. I've got to relate that to oxygen. Okay, so let's go through this. One of those, gives me four of those. But if you notice in your equation, you've actually only got two. So I'm going to times this equation by four. So I'm going to times it by two. So that becomes four, that becomes four, that becomes two, that becomes four, and that becomes four. Right, so that's given me two I2s, so but I've only got one I2 there, so I need to times this equation by two as well. So if I now go through, one of those gives me four of those, four of those gives me two of those, and two of those reacts with four of those. So the relationship between thiosulfate and oxygen is one to four. So moles of O2 is 2.46 times 10 to the minus five divided by four, which gives you 6.15 times 10 to the minus six, that was in 25 centimetres cubed. There. Uh, right, okay, so I now need to work out my concentration of O2, which is 6.15 times 10 to the minus six, divided by 25, times by a thousand, which gives me 2.46 times 10 to the minus 4, that's moles per decimeter cubed. They, no, if you notice, they actually want us to work it out in milligrams per decimeter cubed. So to convert moles per decimeter cubed into grams per decimeter cubed, I need to times by the molar mass of oxygen. So if I do that, it's going to be 2.46 times 10 to the minus 4 times 32. And then if I, well, let's do that first of all. That gives me 7.872 times 10 to the minus 3 grams per decimeter cubed. They want it in milligrams, so I times by 1,000, which is 7.872 milligrams per decimeter cubed. So the hardest bit really is working out the um, unit bit at the end, I think. So the final couple of questions, comment on... Um, whether there's enough dissolved oxygen? Yes, there is, because we worked out to be 7.872 milligrams per decimeter cube, and the fish require it to be higher than five, so we're okay. Well, the next one then, the presence of nitrate free ions interferes with this method, because they can oxidize iodide to IOD. Uh, colors, gases produced with a molar mass of 30. Predict the formula. You've got nitrogen, you've got oxygen going around. Nitrogen's 14, oxygen 16. So the formula is likely to be NO, carbon monoxide. They then want me to do the equation. So write an equation for the oxidation of iodide ions by nitrate free ions. So I've got nitrate ions, I've got iodide ions. It tells me I make hydroxide ions and I also make Iodide, like so. Um, I've got to first of all have two of those, and I also know I make nitrogen monoxide gas as well. So, oxidation state of nitrogen there is going to be plus three, they told me that, and it's plus two there. So that change, that is a change of minus one. 
i dike is minus one there and zero there. So the change is plus one, but I've got two of them. So overall that is a change of plus two. So I need to times this one by two so that the oxidation states balance as well. So that's looking okay now. I've got hydrogen here, but I haven't got any hydrogen there. So I need to produce, get some H plus there at the same time. Uh, let's have a look in terms of oxygens. I've got four there. I've got three there. So if I put a two there, that means I need two H pluses there. 